Hi, I'm Tim Lesser with Leupold and Steven. I'd like to take a few minutes to walk you through our Beaverton, Oregon facility where the world's most rugged, dependable rifle scopes are made. From the Rifleman to the VX7 line, it all happens right here. Let's start downstairs on our machine shop floor. I'm here on the shop floor with Arnie Perry. Arnie, how long have you been with Leupold? I've been with the company now about 36 years. And what is your position here at Leupold? I'm a quality assurance supervisor. Great. Well, thank you for your time. What are, what are we looking at here? I see a lot of materials on, on racks here. What exactly is this stuff? Well, this is our materials warehouse. Uh, all the components that we make that go into our scopes uh, start with raw material. This is where we house the material and issue it out to the machines when we're ready to make those components. Okay. Well, I'm I'm looking at this and I see a lot of long material, long bar stock here. We're making relatively short scopes, so I would assume that there's a lot of that material that doesn't get used. It's turned off or it's, it's turned into waste by the manufacturing process. Exactly, exactly. What, but we can actually reclaim most of that material. Yeah. Uh, we can bring it back into our reclaiming area. Um, we can take the long stringy tip, extract the cutting fluids out of them and reclaim that. Also break them down into smaller, finer chips, compact them and sell them back to the reclaim. Sell them back. Okay, yeah. so when we sell those back, what we're doing is kind of regaining some of our cost on the materials to begin with, and that helps us keep the cost of the product a little bit lower for the end consumer. Exactly. So, as we come in here, this looks to be a pretty sizable shop floor. Right, we have approximately 25,000 square feet of area that we uh, have just to house our CNC and machining centers. What are we, what, what's going on in this machine? What are we seeing here? Well, we're actually machining a VX1 eyepiece shell here. So this is the eyepiece. Right. Is this ready to go into assembly and be a, a finished scope part at this point? Uh, no, we still have some finishing processes that we need to do. Here. Okay. We have a rough finish process, and then we have the final finish that we'll put on it, either a gloss or a matte. Okay, great. Well, I think we might go take a look at how that works. Okay. Thank you so much for your time, Arnie. No I really appreciate it. And now I'm here with John Cargi, taking a look at some of the other manufacturing processes that happen here at Leupold. John, what are we looking at here with this machine? Tim, this is one of six machines that we utilize for production of medium to small parts, some more complex than others. Average cycle time on these machines anywhere from 8 to up to about 25 seconds on our parts. John, how long have you been with Leupold? I've been with Leupold for 35 years, but my family association extends quite a bit longer as my dad was with the company for 30 years previous to me. Wow, so you probably have some great insights as to what's going on and some of the improvements that have been made. I have seen years of machine technology. What are we seeing here? What, what are these parts? Uh, Tim, this is a uh, part of a, a click adjustment on, uh, that we use on many of our scopes. Okay, and so the reason that we see multiple heads, if you will, multiple spindles in there, is because it's going to be taking and doing multiple operations all on one machine? That's one of the benefits of this technology, yes. Okay, great. Well, if you have a few moments, do you think you could take us over and show us some of the finishing procedures? Certainly. That would be great. Thanks, John. So this is the, the place where we carry out the parts finishing process. Yes, Tim. First steps to preparing the parts is sanding. You see main tubes in this area. We're graining the center of the scope, the turret as we call it here. Okay. And then where does it go after it's been grained? After graining, some of the parts come in for the glass bead finish for silver and matte. You've got the glass bead texture now in your uh, left hand. It's very important that all the components on a scope have that exact same texture so that after anodized, that finish is gonna, it's gonna be mat. consistent. Okay. Yeah. Hey, 
Hey, Terry. How you doing, Tim? Good, how are you? Doing real good. I was wondering if you could take a few minutes and kind of show us what you're doing. I here. sure could. Let's, uh, actually, why don't we start with, how long have you been with Google? I've been here 20 years now. I started in 1989 to present and definitely very happy to be here. And, and what is it that you're doing? What's your um, right now we're taking our raw stock that's been delivered from our uh, the warehouse. It's coming in, it's raw stock. We're wiping it down and putting it up onto the bar feeders, getting ready to go into a first operation machine which are the Mazak quick turns. Okay, and what are we making with this stock? Right now we're actually making the ring blanks themselves. Over here we're making a 30 millimeter front ring coming off of this uh, Mazak quick turn. So now are you a hunter as well? Yes, I am. 20 years of hunting. There's, there's a lot of us that are hunters here at Liverpool. Yes, there nice are. Culture. Quite a few. What's nice about it is to hear the different hunting stories and to find out all the good hunting spots. So it works out really nice. It does. Well, what are we, get, what are we looking at here? Well, over here we have our Hodge. We're running a Mark IV ring. We're running four of them at a time, taking them and having the bottom features milled into them after they've already had the uh, first stop done on them. They've had the through hole done. They'll come over here. They'll have the bottom features milled into them and then drilled and tapped, ready to be split. And while that operation's running, the operator has time, so he'll come over and put them on here. We'll split them one at a time so they don't have to go back over to another operation, which is really cost effective to do it right here while the operator has free time. So we'll split them, take them, and then we'll separate them. We'll keep the bottoms from the tops and place them inside these baskets, which are ready to go right over to tumbling. Okay. Now I noticed you just took the top and just dropped it in with all the other tops. Yes. They don't need to be matched. No, they're so uh, precisionally uh, tight tolerances on them. You can uh, mismatch any of these tops with the bottoms. They all fit together. Now before any of these scopes can be built, obviously we need to do some considerable engineering and design time. Let's head upstairs and take a look at how that goes.